What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Bulls preseason basketball starting today and what that means and what our timeline is going to be like on this show and how we're going to cover it. So be on the lookout for that. We're also going to talk about how some of the recent contract extensions that went down are going to affect contract talks with the Chicago Bulls and a couple of their players. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So first up, I want to talk about, of course, we all know Chicago Bulls preseason against the New Orleans Pelicans is starting today, tonight at 930 Eastern my time. Uh, that's when that game goes down. Now, with that being said, um, you know, the, a lot of this conversation surrounding has been who's going to be the starting point guard what's the lineup's going to be what's this what's that we're going to see some of that today like as we've seen um with some of these preseason games is that starters haven't been playing heavy minutes down to like no minutes at all so while you know billy donovan's comments over he's still trying to decide how many minutes the starters will play tells me that more than likely the starters are going to play some minutes i would say that you're looking at demar zach and vooch probably playing about 15 to 18 minutes in this game tonight but uh, a lot of the players that you're looking for stuff from, like Io could play more. He could play upwards of 20-plus 20, 20 minutes. Alex Caruso as well. Same for uh, Goran Dragic as they're trying to figure out who's going to be that starting point guard. Um, you're going to see something from maybe a, a player like Patrick Williams who didn't get a considerable amount of time last season um, as far as games played. So they may look to like get him in rhythm, some things like that. What is he added to his game? What is what is new in his bag? Kobe White's probably going to play um, some significant minutes. And then we're going to see what between uh, Costas, uh, Antetokounmpo, uh, Marco Simonovic, Andre Drummond, they're probably going to play heavy minutes there. Um, you're also looking at Dalen Terry, of course. Carla Jones is probably going to play um, some heavy minutes as well. Then Derek Jones Jr., Javante. Players like that are probably going to play the bulk of the minutes, so we'll see what happens with that. But one of the things that was said outside of Billy Donovan's comments is also Goran Dragic saying that he's basically been most impressed by Io DeSumo so far in training camp. And so as we talk about that, that point guard battle, who's going to be that starting point guard, how this uh, coaching staff ends up working that out, I, you guys know, I believe I'm of the mind that Io DeSumo has the inside track on that. I've said it before. Uh, Alex Caruso, I think, is better coming off the bench. He's even said it himself that, you know, he, he cares more about finishing than starting. Um, Goran Dragic, while Goran is a veteran in this league, um, he's been on the decline, especially defensively on the last couple of years. Now, he hasn't been healthy either, so we'll see how health impacts that. But I look at this starting lineup, it doesn't need a lot of sh more shooting or scoring in it. And while, you know, some of you guys have made the points that, you know, his basketball IQ and he's run the point and things like that, Goran Dragic isn't either the, the true half-court point guard run everything the offense through. And even if he was, we know that that's going to pr primarily fall on DeMar DeRozan. So I, ha I think Io has the inside track on that. But I wanted to look at like some of Io's uh, statistics, specifically as a starter last year for the Chicago Bulls. So as a starter last year, Io DeSumo averaged, he started 40 games for the Bulls, so almost half the season. Um, he played 34, uh, basically 35 minutes in those games. He averaged 8.6 shots per game. He hit that at a 52% clip. He hit the three ball as a starter at a 35% clip as well. Free throw percentage actually took a huge uptick. Overall, for his three-point shooting for the season, it was 67%, but as a starter, it was 78.9%, which is much better. Uh, he averaged 3.6 rebounds per game, 5.4 assists per game, 1.1 uh, steals per game, and 10.9 points per game. Those are all as a starter. So the thing with Io DeSumo, when you hear the conversation around Io and why this Bulls team is so high on him, the fact that he was a second-round pick, we heard then from AK that they kind of expected him to maybe, it was Billy Donovan, uh, to be in and out of the G League. And then he earned that those rotational minutes. He came in, then eventually they felt safe with him being the starter. They didn't go out and get another veteran to take that place when injuries went down, things like that. So I do think Io DeSumo has that inside track. And as we've heard, like him adding stuff to his game and, and a possible leap he may take, there's also the possibility of a sophomore slump. But it's good to hear that Io DeSumo in, is coming into the sophomore season really and a contract year surprisingly enough uh it is it all that's coming down and he's poised to have a big position he's going to be able to a big role i should say whether he's starting or not he's still going to play heavy minutes on this team and he's going to get every chance he can get to really shine on this roster so going into this preseason game tonight against the pelicans it's going to be I think we're going to see a lot of Zion just because Zion missed so much basketball. I think they're going to want to see get him maybe 20 minutes in this game tonight. Um, so we'll see. It's on TNT as well. You know, they, they'll say officially that that doesn't play a part in, but best believe. 
The NBA puts you on nationally televised games. They're going to want to see some of your starters out there. So with that being said, um, we'll take a look at that. We'll see what it, what it ends up turning into. I think this game is going to be a fun game. And as I said, we're going to talk about our schedule. We're going to have a halftime hangout and a post-game live stream. That's what we're going to have. We're going to get back to it. Um, I'm so excited to do it. It's been so long since we've had these. So really excited to get back to doing that. It's going to be fun times here at Chicago Bulls Central as we gear up to get ready for the regular season again and as we go down with everything. So exciting times here around Chicago Bulls Nation. But the thing that I wanted to talk about next before we go is how some of these contract extensions that we've seen lately could impact the contract negotiations with the Chicago Bulls. We heard earlier in this offseason that the Bulls are expected to talk a contract extension with Nikola Vucevic um, this summer. They said during training camp, training camp's basically over the preseason open, but we'll see what happens with that. But we got recent deals announced, uh, extensions with Stephen Adams and Larry Nance Jr. Now, these players, if you look at their averages, are much less, and even their roles on the team aren't quite the impact that uh, or the expectation that uh, Vooch has in our offense. And we talked about the defense and things like that, but for example, Stephen Adams agreed to a two-year, $25.2 mil, uh, 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 million dollar extension. Um, so, yeah. So, now he's going to be with the Grizzlies for three years, uh, another $43 million over those three years, but $25 million extension he signed over two years. So, it kind of sets that market, right? About 12 and a half there for him, a little over 12 and a half. Then Larry Nance Jr. comes in as well. Two years, $21.6 million for Larry Nance Jr. So, what does that mean for Nikola Vucevic? When you look at these players and their averages, uh, Larry Nance Jr., for example, last season, averaged less than uh, eight, eight points per game, 5.4 rebounds, 1.8 assists. Uh, now, he played about 22 minutes per game in that time, split between the Trailblazers and the uh, New Orleans Pelicans, and he had a PER 14.37. When you flip that to Steven Adams, Steven Adams, who actually started 75 games, he played in 76 last uh, season, he uh, played 26 minutes in those games, had uh, splits of 6.9 rebounds, 10 assists, 3.4, um, uh, 10 rebounds, 3.4 assists, and had a PER of 17.60. So when you take that to the Chicago Bulls and the center that we may be uh, talking in extension with in Nikola Vucevic, what, what market does that set for him? That's the biggest question there. What, well, how does that affect the market for Nikola Vucevic? And I had been hoping and expecting that maybe we can sign uh, Nikola Vucevic at a contract extension that's about $15 million per year. But now looking at those deals, it kind of puts that into question a little bit for me. Are we going to be able to necessarily sign him at that, at that money? And then at that point, are we paying too much for him? Nikola Vucevic, who's making $22 million this season, um, he's, he is uh, uh, you know, going into his 31-year-old season. So what does that mean? Let's take a look at Nikola Vucevic's numbers for last season. While I know a lot of Bulls fans are going to focus on the three-point per uh, shooting percentage, and that's fair, but Nikola Vucevic last season started in 73 games, played in all, in all 73 that he played in, he started for the Chicago Bulls. He averaged 15.8 shots per game. He hit that at a 40% clip. Now the three-point percentage is where it falls out. He averaged four and a half three-point shots per game, hit that at a 31% clip, which is, very low for him, but keep in mind, he usually hasn't shot that. He's only been a volume three-point shooter for a handful of years, but with that being said, the three-point percentage definitely needs to improve. Um, he averaged 17.6 points per game, 11 rebounds per game, 3.2 assists per game, and right out of block per game, and he had a PER of 18.27, best for 43rd overall in the NBA. So if we're looking at the contract extension for Nikola Vucevic and how that sets the tone for that, we very well could be looking at, at Vooch signing a contract extension between $17 and $19 million per year, and that's probably still me being generous a little bit. So the question is, is with that market being set, unless he does give the Bulls a, um, a discount in some type of way for, for him being on this team, that could be a possibility. Um, he's also around the same age as the other players as well. Uh, Larry Nance Jr. is only 29, so it's a, it's a two-year uh, difference there. But, you know, saying that, it's like now you have to look at it and say, okay, what does what do we want to see from Nikola Vucevic? Uh, Steven Adams also 29. What do we want to see from Nikola Vucevic to, as far as a contract extension and production? We know that he's talking about more. Uh, back to the basket game, not relying so heavily on his three-pointer, being smarter with taking that three-point shot. But are, are Nikola Vucevic's numbers worth that $17 to $19 million per year? I still think that they are. I think that it may be a bad contract by the end of it, but it does start raising some questions on it. But at the end of the day, it's like, what else are you going to do? The Bulls don't have true cap space. Now, they can next season if they don't sign him or Kobe White. They could have a true cap space of almost $20 million. 
if they don't extend him. But with that being said, like still, you kind of have to try to lock in the talent in which you can. And as we've seen in the NBA, no deal is not movable. So if you do need to get off that deal, you 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 could. How much you what you need to give up to do so is the is the biggest question there. But I do look at these two ex- contract extensions, and we'll continue watching and seeing what else happens over the course of the season. As maybe, just maybe, right? A a kind of a base. For Nikola Vucevic and where that, if his agent is smart, he's going to be looking at those as well and saying, hey, these guys got this, but my guy's better. So we'll see with that. Now, another contract extension that I do want to talk heavily about and how it could affect the Chicago Bulls in two, with two different players is Tyler Hero's $130 million contract extension with the Miami Heat. Now, the, the, the players that I'm going to use this to compare to, we know that the Bulls have two guards that are coming up in free agency this season, and that is Kobe White and Io DeSumo. Now, Io is a little bit different. Second round rookie, there's a cap on what he can get, what he can make, so he's not going to nearly get a uh, uh, extension that big. And Kobe White isn't either. But how do those contract extension talks go if they decide to have them at the end of the season? We know they're not going to talk contract with Kobe. He would have to perform this season. But really, Kobe White and and Tyler Hero, their career trajectories were kind of similar, basically until the last last year, right? Basically until the last year in 2021. Kobe White's stat line was 15.1 points per game, 4.1 rebounds, 4.8 assists on 41% field goal shooting and 35% shooting from three-point range, 90% shooting from three. Tyler Hero in 2020, uh, 20, the t- 2020 to 21 season, um, uh, 15.1 points per game, exactly the same there, five rebounds per game, 3.4 assists, 43.9 field goal percentage and 36% shooting from the three-point range, only 80% shooting from free throw range. So when you look at those stat lines, those are very, 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 very similar. Now, we know last season took a big change in their career trajectories, and Tyler Hero took another step up. That's why he got the contract extension talks that he got, but with the or the, the talk, the extension that he got, but with Kobe White, if Kobe White does improve, we all know that if Kobe White's going to be on this team, we want to see him improve. And I know some people are going to say, well, it's just to increase his trade value. The way Billy Donovan has been talking about Kobe White, I don't necessarily agree anymore that it's just to up any trade value. I think that they see a role for Kobe White on this team and to be very effective in this team playing winning basketball. Now, if Kobe White does do that, if he increases, right, let's say he he becomes a more consistent player, which is one of the biggest issues with with Kobe White is his consistency. We know his averages last season did take a dip even from that 20 uh, to 21 season. But with that being said, his role changed drastically in that time. He went from being the projected starting point guard to being a, a not even the sixth man off the bench. Like he, there were two guards ahead of him at, at different points in the season. He came in and out of the starting lineup. Kobe White last season, 12.7 points per game, three rebounds, 2.9 assists, 12, uh, 12.60 PER. Um, so with that being said, like looking at Kobe White and the shooting splits last season weren't terrible. He started 17 games, played in 61 for the Chicago Bulls, 43% shooting overall from the field. So he still took an increase from the season before. His three-point shooting percentage increased as well, 38.5%, but we all know it's the consistency with Kobe White. Now, as I've talked about here before, with Io DeSumo and Kobe White both coming up with contract extensions needed at the end of this season if the Bulls decide to keep both of them, which I'm thinking is less and less likely every day, you could possibly have over $90 million wrapped up in just your guards when you factor in Zach, Lonzo, Io DeSumo, Alice Caruso, Kobe White. That's not even counting Goran Dragic. If you throw that in, it's, it's well above $90 million per year projectedly, right? So could this, could looking at that market, the same way that we talked about the Nikola Vucevic deal, looking at the what guards get paid, if Kobe does have a good season, is the writing on the wall that Kobe White's time with the Chicago Bulls is over? That's the biggest question here, right? And I'm not here to answer that per se there. I don't have the answers. We need to go through the season before I'm even willing to try to give an answer to that. But it raises a lot of questions there on what the Chicago Bulls team is going to do. If Kobe White comes in and is a big part off your bench and turns into that bench score that you need, want, and that is, is, is productive and consistent, you typically want to try to keep that player around. But does it become too financially expensive for the Chicago Bulls, a team that obviously is, as of right now, trying to avoid the luxury tax as well? What happens in that point? What happens at that time? Right, it's easy to just say the Bulls are going to trade him. Oh, Kobe's Kobe's done here. But if Kobe takes that, keep in mind it's the same age as Io DeSumo, basically. So if we're still thinking Io DeSumo can make improvements, Kobe White absolutely can too. So with that, if Kobe White does make those improvements and he does become a consistent and dangerous part off the Chicago Bulls bench, is it worth paying that much money at the guard position alone? 
Is it worth it? That's the uh, uh, patent the designer dramatic pause there unintentionally. But, you know, is it is it worth it at that point? That's the question. And, and I'm sure AK and everybody are evaluating right now. We know that they, they are very prepared um, front office, but it raises some questions because if Kobe performs well, if he performs well, unless you decide to flip him for a younger piece or flip him for a, a, a veteran that's under a longer, more team friendly contract, like. The, the, I wouldn't say a conundrum, but the, the questions around Kobe White, both if he does not succeed, because if he doesn't succeed, if he does come in and still inconsistent, has a bad season, whatever it is, it kind of the, the, it answers itself at that point. But if Kobe is what this team needs him and it seems like the head coach Billy Donovan wants him to be, then that is a productive member of this bench. It presents an interesting question for the Chicago Bulls. Let me know what you guys think about all that down below on both players and their contract extensions. But that is it. We have preseason basketball today. I'll be back live post-game show and halftime hangout. So be here. I'll get those posted early as well and scheduled so you guys can know, get notified when we go live, all that good thing. But that is it for today's episode of Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you follow the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and or voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We're the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls, especially tonight. Go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Media.